Hi, everybody, and welcome. I think I'm recording. Am I recording? I guess I am. Well, welcome. And guess what? We have a special guest here with us today. This is my good friend, the Grinch. Uh, well, that worked out nicely. Well, yeah, it is nice to have you here, Mr. Grinch. So let's start with the basics again for the thousandth time. Right, here we are, our stem cell concept, right? Remember, stem cells are really the only guys that can do mitosis. And whether it's an adult stem cell or an embryonic stem cell, right? Mitosis happens. One guy usually goes down to be terminally differentiated. The other guy goes back to stay undifferentiated as a stem cell. So that's just the basics. And right, so even though we've been told our whole lives that cells do mitosis and they give two identical daughter cells that then blah, blah, blah replace other cells, lost in the world, it's not true. We, almost always one goes back and stays the same cell, and this guy goes to differentiate, or he may do another round if he's still, right, at least the progenitor cell, and then stay the same. So, ooh, let's see that's a little better, uh oh, sorry, there we go. So this is just a lot of information. We've talked about this in our basics, so I'm gonna leave this slide up. This is a good slide to come back to. Um, the lecture notes will be posted also to go with this lecture, so this is always a nice way to come back and look at all the facts if you need them, but I'm not gonna read them to you because, you know, that would just, that'd be a little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would totally lose my cool if somebody just read. Okay, so again, we're still doing a little basic. Um, remember our definitions, the codipotent, only that single cell embryo, right? Only that guy or that very small cluster of cells, four cells, six cells. Once we get to where we make that uh, blastula, right? Here's our inner cell mass. This would be that trophoblast. It's then just pluripotent. That inner cell mass can become everything except placenta. And then, right, we grow up and cord blood cells and placenta stem cells are multipotent, right? Um, pretty much can just become blood cells, can't really become anything else. And then adult stem cells that we find in our tissues, like we talked about last time. And so here again, oh, there we go. We can see this a little better. Right, this is again, it's a nice chart to show us the direct comparison for all of these different types, right? So if we're talking about totipotent, right? Toti means total, pluri means more, many, multi means many. Right, and then we can compare what can they become? When do they happen? Where do they come from? What are they all? Right, so we can always use this as a really nice reference anytime we need to go back and remember those definitions. Okay, we should try to remember as much as we can because then it'll make it easier to have conversations. What do you think of that, Gracie? Puzzle. Yeah, the Grinch is having some issues memorizing this um, chart, but you know, I don't know. I think I think it's okay. I don't think it's fine. All right, so you can always come back to this again. We've talked about this in our other lecture, and then just like that, guys. As you can see. We have our adult versus embryonic stem cells as well. So we can do a direct comparison. Where are they obtained? How flexible? Meaning what kind of potency do they have? Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages for using them in science, right? I mean, they are what they are. <laughs> Nothing inherently good or bad about them. But if we're using them to advance human health, here's what they mean by advantages. 
and disadvantage. Okay, so that's, you know, that's just what that's. What do you think? Is that okay? Grinty? Are you good at that? No, nobody has hair welling up inside them. That's you. You're the one that's totally scared of learning. These guys, these are good. We're, we're, we don't have a problem. And again, here we go. Lots of writing. Again, not going to read it um, because that's super boring. But again, a nice reference for you guys. You can always come back to this lecture notes. And we have our little pictures just so we can really remember, right? What's our fertilized egg? He's our friend. He's our good friend, the zygote. What is he? He is OT. And here's that ball of cells. Not yet the blastula <laughs> or the blastocyst, right? Before that, it's just a ball of cells. Once we get here, then this is the guy, right, that we can isolate and we can culture, right? This would be what becomes our end. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes? Yes? Yes. I think, I think, yeah, I think it's good. What do you think? Is that, is that a good thing? Thank you. <laughs> okay, now that's just rude. Don't hope our students Honestly, so I, I'm sorry, I can't. Thank you, Cindy Lou, who he does need a time out. Oh, no violence, sorry. Okay, moving on. Again, lots of writing. Woohoo! Come back to this. We talked about adult stem cells, so none of this should be that new, but again, nice reference. And a nice little picture for us here, right? Remember, we do have multipotent stem cells in adult tissue. When we say adult, right, it can also be in kids and infants. We just don't mean that we really should say non-embryonic. But that becomes really cumbersome, and so we just say adult stem cells, right? So, that's and puzzled, and puzzled, and puzzled, and puzzled. <laughs> oh, poor Grinchy. All right, so how about this guy? This one's new. Woohoo! Umbilical cord blood stem cells. No, people. No, stop calling me. Okay, sorry. Umbilical cord blood stem cells. So again, lots of writing. We can always come back to it, but where do you think this comes from? Yes, yes, I like what we've done here, the umbilical cord. So again, it's just hematopoietic stem cells. What does that mean again? Blood cells. So I know a lot of parents get worked up about saving the umbilical cord and the umbilical cord blood, and um, they're told that they should save it and store it and pay $5,000 a year in case they need it. It can really just make blood cells for that particular child. Um, not a bad thing, right? But it's not the utopia that maybe um, these companies that store it tell you it is. Like a, you, yeah. It's really a little better than being able to make IPSCs, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I don't know. Okay, so that's a for people to decide, but here's some really good information, right? Even in here, one of the most important things right here, present in minute quality, quantity, that means tiny. They're still really, really, really hard to identify and isolate and then purify for use. So it's not like the cord blood is just <laughs> packed with stem cells and woohoo, everything's great. So it's still really difficult. Not a bad thing, but difficult. All right. IPSCs. Yes, we're going to have a whole lecture on these. We're going to talk about this a lot. These guys, super important. 
And why is that? Because they are adult cells, any adult cell. Skin, they like to use because that's easy. Would that be easy to get from a person? Yeah, you just take a little chunk out. <laughs> Boink! That would be fun, right? Just get that little biopsy thing tool and it just is like a punch, a punch out thing. Yeah. <laughs> No one, no, no, no one is scared of a punch on their own. <laughs> so we can take some skin cells and then we can genetically reprogram to, to be embryonic stem cell like. What does that mean? They become pluripotent. You can make them become every single cell type in our body except the placenta. And as an adult person or like a kid or somebody who needs stem cells to treat something, I don't think you need to make a placenta. I mean, okay, there might be an instance, but right, normally, mm -hmm. okay. So these are super, super, super important. IPSCs come from the person they go back into, so there's no immune rejection. They are one of the most amazing discoveries of our lifetime has the most potential to help human health. So, I love them. What do you think? Do you think that's a good thing? What, how do you feel about uh, stem cells? Well, well, that worked out nicely. <laughs> yeah, where you put stem cells totally worked out nicely for us. See, you got some of this stuff, it's not so bad. All right, the last little guy we're gonna talk about is somatic cell nuclear transfer. What is this? Cloning. That used to be the big thing, right? Dolly the sheep. Woohoo! And now it's like, whatever. <laughs> so let's look at a little picture. And what do we have here? This was our good friend, Dolly the sheep. And so what did they do? They took a cytoplasmic donor. What does that mean? So they just took enucleated, right, that cell. So it was a gamete, it was an egg. They sucked out the nucleus, right? Here's your little nucleus. Bye bye. Bye bye, nucleus. And then they took, and they made this guy a black face just so they could see phenotypically what the baby looks like which black face is dominant over white face. So, right, if any of this DNA, bye bye DNA, from the black face guy ended up in the offspring, the offspring would have a black face. And so they took that, um, they took cells, mammary cells, which have all the DNA, they were adult, right, with all the chromosomes, all the DNA, and they zapped it right here into that egg with no nucleus and woohoo after lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of tries they got that dna in that egg to go through mitosis 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 form that blastocyst inner cell mass right put them back in the uterus of the black face again make it easy to see and guess what popped out dolly the white face dna from these adult cells created this little guy. So that was amazing. <laughs> Honestly. Cindy Lou Who? Yeah, you need to just relax. It's ridiculous. Okay. So that was cool. So again, if we're talking back, jumping back to embryonic stem cells, which again, we will talk about in the future in a lot, right? If we want a direct differentiation of an embryonic stem cell, which as it turns out, you can do the same for a IPSC cell. You take the inner cell mass, right? The IPSC cell. And you stick them in a, <laughs> a culture plate. You grow these embryoid bodies. So they try to actually round up and become like the blastocyst. And they kind of look like that. And then we just add 
precursor molecules, so hormones, growth factors, um, substances, chemicals that turn on specific genes and turn off other genes, so that if we want to get a neuron, we do the stuff, we add the stuff that creates a neuron, the same stuff that creates neurons during embryonic development, like we talked about, if we want to make some pancreas. We would add those growth factors until we get, right, pancreas cells, insulin secreting, that would help people with di uh, pancreas cells. diabetes, right there, yeah, I think it would be. So we would help people with diabetes. Oh, well. That's what that's yes, thank you. It does. You need to just pipe down. Okay. Where was I? Okay. And so then if the same idea, just a little more detail right here again in a cell mass, or I can see we culture those guys, embryonic cells, and cells, embryonic bodies. Again, this is specifically showing us different growth factors that you can add to get a bunch of different cell types. Fat cells, neurons, macrophage, that's a blood cell, white blood cell, uh, muscles, or in this case they're saying smooth muscles, right? That's like in your intestine, causes hair cells, it's not like dry, it is. Okay, and then of course, our neurons. Just to mention, Wanted to talk a little bit about those adult stem cells to give us a little better idea of what that means. We know there's lots of lots. There's adult stem cells in our skin because we are constantly making new layers of skin while we slough off the old stuff. So right, if we think, if we, if we remember anything, <laughs> or maybe we never learned it, our dermis, that lower part of our skin versus the epidermis, epi meaning outside, so outside the dermis. So the epidermis, these guys, and these layers are still alive. And then once we get to the top layers, it's just dead cells, right? So they're easy to come off. We're always using skin cells. We can totally see it when we get a sunburn and we peel off a whole layer. Otherwise, we're constantly fluffing dead cells off. Uh, we are creating new cells from these transit amplifying cells Right, there's stem cells here, they're differentiating down here into these little wells. And once they get to here, they turn, whoop, anaphase, woohoo, terminally differentiate, and then they migrate up as these guys are sloughed off. Same thing over here. Terminal differentiation just means when they get to that final cell type, they can't be anything more. Well, that's it, they're at the end. What now? So transit amplifying cells, this is just that little picture uh, showing us what happens, right? We have that stem cell, of course, in, in our example, it was the skin stem cell. Mitosis, mitosis, mitosis. And then that guy goes back, right? We gotta replace that stem cell. If we sent them all away, then we'd have no replace in our skin cells and then it would be nasty. <laughs> this guy, right, then makes more of himself, more of himself until he's terminally different. And then these guys go to the outside and die. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, poor skin cells. I know, it does make you panic a little, huh? And again, so how can we control these? We can control these. So that stem cell again, going all the way down, right? Stem cell division how many stem cells actually can die too. Um, the probability that it will become a progenitor or just make more stem cells. Cycle time, cell death, right? Some cells die by apoptosis. Committed progenitor cell division, right? Some cells somehow know how many times they need to, to cell divide as a progenitor before they terminally differentiate. That's gotta be all signals in that tissue. And then how long those And if we think about that, any kind of stem cells, stem cells are good, right? They help us, but what about something bad? Here's our normal pathway, right? Self-renewing self guy, so one guy stays, right? Him, this guy, 
terminally, goes through progenitors, terminally differentiates, everything's great. What if the stem cells don't make a daughter cell and they, right, they, or, sorry, they don't produce one non-stem cell and one stem cell and they all just start reproducing themselves back in form of tumor. That can become cancer, bad. And what about if the daughter cell never differentiates normally, never gets to this non-dividing state, so we think most cancers come from adult stem cells in those tissues. Rather than like we've always been told, one liver cell goes rogue and starts replicating itself, it has to be a liver stem cell that goes rogue in one of these two possibilities. Cancer stem cells field of research. We can figure out that, and then we can fix, control these steps that go wrong. That could be really good. All right, what else? Ah, the last one we're going to talk about, I think, yeah, I don't know, is hematopoietic stem cells. What does that mean? These are the blood and immune cells, red blood cells, white blood cells. Like we talked about in the intro, um, they come from the bone marrow. That's where all our blood marrow, blood cells come from. These are lots and lots of stem cells in your bone marrow. Uh, sometimes you can get them in the peripheral blood. There are methods where we can make our bone marrow proliferate more quickly and spit out more stem cells into the blood. They do this. Um, to collect bone marrow and to collect stem cells if you need a bone marrow transplant. And there's, if you have a cancer, there's nothing wrong with your, with your blood cells. There's a cancer of some other cell type, but all that chemo is killing your bone marrow and they wanna give you a crap load of chemo and radiation to get rid of the tumor. They will induce your bone marrow to spit out a lot of stem cells, collect it in through um, hemophoresis. So you take your blood out filter out those stem cells, put your blood back in, and then you have those stem cells. They can whack you with a ton of crap that would normally kill you because it kills your bone marrow by accident, cancer, but also your bone marrow, and then give you your own bone marrow back. Oh, cure your cancer, save your life, or at least knock your cancer way back. So that's a really, really, really good thing. So here we go, we're not gonna memorize the amount of boosters, but just so you can uh, understand how this works. Right, again, hematopoietic multipotent bone marrow cell, progenitor, progenitor for lymphoid, progenitor for myeloid. If you're a lymphoid progenitor, you become the B2 cells, NKs and dendritic cells. If you're a myeloid progenitor, you can become all of these other guys. And look down here, Erythrocyte, what is that guy? Remember, that's our red blood cell. Pretty much everything else in here, except for your platelets, are what we call our white blood cell. And then there's our little thing. What are those guys for? Clotting blood. And last but not least, oh, I already talked about this, which I shouldn't have. I forgot this is in here. So this is an example in a mouse, but this would be a bone marrow cell transfusion or what we would call a bone marrow transplant. And so, right, we can take a mouse that's got some issues and we can irradiate the crap out of him, which would normally kill him, right? Kills your bone marrow, but without your bone marrow, you're gonna die. And then we can give back healthy marrow cells or uh, the stem cell progenitors that we induce to get spewed out of our bone marrow into our bloodstream back into that mouth. Those guys, you can just inject them right into a vein and they will travel to the bone and come in the bone marrow and recapitulate that, that marrow and make a new supply of blood cells and be super happy. Okay, guys, so what do you think? This lecture today, Cindy Lou, who had the Grinch do? Yeah, I, I do think he was kind of bad. 
Um, so, yeah, let's go. Let's say goodbye to the Grinch. Let's say goodbye. And um, thanks for listening. Appreciate it. It takes me a while to stop. There you go. Stop recording.